chronic liver disease world over today is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The word is non-alcoholic but it is when we define it, we, we specify the amount of alcohol. So, in heavy drinkers, so the amount of alcohol that is allowed is one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for men. So, beyond that, we will say the person is a heavy drinker. We also define it by the amount of fat amount of fat should be at least 5 to 10 percent or more of the liver cells are affected. So, it, st it starts off with steatosis, moves on to steatohepatitis, then cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. So, these are the liver related problems. There are certain risk factors and the most significant of them is obesity. In obese people, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease may be present in up to 92 to 95 percent. In the general population, non-obese, even in lean, if we total that, it is about 20 to 30 percent and that is the world over. In our study from Prayagraj, in which we just did an ultrasound, it was 32 percent prevalence of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The gold standard for the diagnosis is a liver biopsy, which we know is invasive and we would like to avoid a liver biopsy if possible. Yes, sometimes it is indicated. The next best with a very good sensitivity and specificity is MRI elastography. The usual way to diagnose is when a patient comes to you, patient has already had a routine ultrasound of the abdomen for some other reason and the ultrasonologist discovers that the liver is fatty. We quite often order liver enzymes. SGPT and SGOT for certain indications in our clinical practice. So, abnormal liver enzymes or a routinely done ultrasound may pick up a fatty liver. Once the diagnosis is made, it is important to characterize the extent of fibrosis. We also do the other viral markers to make sure that it is just to exclude. So, the diagnosis of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, you have to exclude a lot of other viral diseases which may affect the liver. The simplest ones that we are all aware of are hepatitis B and hepatitis C. So, viral markers need to be studied because like I said, it is a diagnosis of exclusion. So, once the diagnosis is established, we confirm the extent of fibrosis and then decide how the patient is subsequently managed. Drugs, unfortunately we do not have any drugs which are approved but pioglitazone, vitamin E have been recommended. GLP-1 analogs are also useful. So, the drugs which are available still need to be studied and we need a drug which is absolutely going to help us. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, like I said, is not just focused to the liver. Apart from the liver, there are other associated comorbidities which need to be looked into. Diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia also need to be investigated. So, all these patients need a thorough metabolic profile to be investigated. It is not a benign disease. Some individuals are at risk for coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, peripheral arterial disease as well. It can start in children as early as teens because obesity is becoming more and more common today. Apart from the investigations, 
for the liver as well as the associated comorbidities like I've said you need to look into coronary artery disease, cerebrovessel disease and appropriate investigations in that case would be ordered. There is some association of CKD with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and in the presence of CKD coronary artery disease is also aggravated. So this becomes a vicious circle. There are a lot of risk factors which are common to both coronary artery disease as well as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. All the investigations which are required should be ju judiciously ordered and then the treatment decided accordingly. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.